Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and 3D printed a replacement handle for this jack wrench using SketchUp and my 3D printer. So this jack wrench is designed to fit onto a scissor jack on a trailer that I own, and you just spin it around like this and it raises or lowers the jack. So as you can see, there's supposed to be a handle at the top here and it's missing. So instead of throwing this out and buying a new one, I decided to design one in SketchUp and print it out. So I wanted to show you the process that I went through to design this, so let's check it out. So here's what the finished handle looks like and this is um, part of the shaft. This is the top part of the shaft that the handle fits on. So you can see it goes on just like that. It doesn't look like much here. I'm going to turn on x-ray and you can see the difference here. Um, you can see the inside of it and how it interacts with the handle. So the first thing I wanted to do was model the part of the shaft that the 3D printed object is going to fit, fit onto. So I used the circle tool and because the circle tool is defined by a radius I had to use the scale tool to um, to scale it by the diameter. So just by holding down the shift key, you can scale um, uniformly and you can type in a, a diameter to define the dimension there. So from there, I just use the push pull tool to you know get my height. Again, typing in the distances as I went along. And then the offset tool to um, to model this notch. And again, I used the scale tool with uh, the shift key, and this time I was holding down the option key. I think it's control for PC. That lets me scale um, about the center, but again, I'm able to type in a, um, a diameter dimension. I can't remember what it was. I was using calipers to measure this as I, as I was going along, so I was able to model very accurately. I continued along to model this whole thing. Now this last part here was actually looked like this and as you can see I offset this and then I used the move tool while holding down the uh, while tapping the up arrow and that let me create that conical shape at the end of the shaft. So once I had this uh, modeled then what I did is instead of following the same process for designing the handle, you know, starting from the bottom and going up, what I did is I wanted to make a profile and then use the follow me tool to extrude the profile around to create the final shape. So what I did is I started out with a simple rectangle and I snapped it to the center of the shaft. So you can find the center of um, of objects um, by using the inference system. So if you just hover over like one of the endpoints and then travel along, it'll it'll lock to the center point. It's kind of tricky sometimes with um, with circles to find the center point. Um, one thing that I I do have a plugin called Guide Tools that lets me put a center point. So if I wanted a center point at the middle of this circle. I could just select the circle, go to guide tools and put C point at circle center and you can see I now have this this point at the middle. So that's a handy extension to have if you use guide points a lot. Now it's important to note that the, the jack handle, the shaft here is in a group. And so what that means is when I, if I draw on it, nothing is going to be uh, stuck to it. So it's not going to intersect geometry. Um, it's protected. Okay, so in order to edit the the shaft here, I have to double click on it to access that group. Likewise, I did the same thing with this rectangle. I placed the rectangle in a group and the way you put something into a group is very simple. You just triple click on it and then you right click and you can make group. So now you have to double click to jump into that. So the, the other reason why you want to have this in a group is you probably notice that whenever I open a group, 
everything else in the model disappears. So I can toggle that on and off. I have a keyboard shortcut that uh, toggles that on and off, but you can access that uh, option in the view menu if you go to component edit hide rest of model so that allows you to quickly toggle back and forth um, while you're editing a group or a component you can turn the rest of the model on or off so that's really great as you start modeling you can um, you know use the other parts of the model for reference but then if you need to see see something you know behind it um, you can quickly turn it on and off. So um, you should check out, I'll have a link in the description below on the my guide on how to set up those keyboard shortcuts. So once I had this, pr this uh, rectangle in place, then it became very easy for me to start drawing my profile that I wanted. So I used a, a number of um, guides. So I'd use the tape measure tool and create create guides um, t for reference to help me measure the distance away uh, that I wanted. And honestly, this is just using the, uh, the the line tool and the arc tool to give me a rounded edge on the outside of the handle. And this is all just trial and error. So I needed to use my best judgment to give enough space between the printed object and the shaft. So this is a half a millimeter of space. So I needed enough space to where there wouldn't be a lot of friction so the handle would spin around very easily, but I needed this notch to be tight enough so that when the handle went on, it would actually clip into place and not fall off. So this is all just trial and error and just kind of you know, winging it, just taking my best guess to to uh, to measure those precisely to have the properties that I'm looking for. Once I come up with a profile that I like, then it's just a matter of deleting the rest of the rectangle entities until you're left with the the final uh, profile. Now before I can use the follow me tool to extrude this around I need to have a path to follow and what I what I'm gonna do is just grab the circular path that's already existing in the shaft and then copy it over to the profile. So I'm gonna just double click to jump inside this group. I'm gonna select the circle and press uh, control C or command C to copy this selected uh, geometry then I'll back out of the group and jump into this one and I'm going to paste in place so you can find that in the edit menu paste in place and what that does is it pastes whatever you had copied in the same physical location but it's actually um, placed into whatever active group you're in Okay, so the circle is still still exists in the shaft group, but it's also now existing here as well. So I would consider this to be my first uh, prototype, but before I extrude it, I want to make a backup copy of it because once you use the follow me tool, it's very hard to then go back and ex and make changes to it because you lose that profile. The profile disappears once it's extruded. So I'm just going to make a copy. I'm going to use the move tool, tap um, control or option to indicate that I want to make a copy. I'm just going to throw that in the back there and just know that that's there as uh, backup. Now the other thing though is I don't want to go ahead and extrude this whole thing and try to print it out just as is because what if I go through all that trouble and all that time to print this out and you know it might take an hour or so to print this entire handle and what if I try to put it on and this is just a little too tight or a little too loose so whenever you're designing stuff for 3D printing you want to try to isolate things and test them out separately so what I'm gonna do is create another copy of this okay and I'm going to actually extract just this top part and we're going to print that out. So I'm going to jump inside this group. I'm going to cut this like that. And I'm just going to erase all this bottom, the bottom uh, portion of this. 
and then and you can you can see that this these profiles aren't changing because these are groups if we were using components then we'd be in trouble because all these changes I'm making here would be repeating here so that's why I decided to use a group in this case so now I can jump into this group select the path we're gonna use the follow me tool so I'm gonna select the path and grab the follow me tool select the uh, profile and there we go the only thing is it extruded inside out so it does that sometimes depending on which side you use the follow me tool on so I just want to go to I want to right click one of the faces click reverse faces and then right click it one more time and orient faces so that's going to orient the entire um, group or the you know all the connected um, entities and will orient the faces properly so I'm going to turn on x-ray so we can kind of see what the inside of this looks like so this is really the critical these are the critical profiles that we need to test out so in the next video we're gonna go ahead and export this we're gonna bring it into the slicing software and print it out and test it out and see how it works